Hey, welcome to another episode of In Review. I'm joined by Omar. Hello. And Lawrence. Yeah, it's been hey. a minute. Hey. Talking, talking about Splatoon 2. That's right. Well, hey, first, uh, we are going to talk about Splatoon 2, but let me, uh, let's lay out the philosophy of what we do here. Uh, we are not, like, holistic reviewers. We're just dudes who like playing video games. So, uh, unlike most reviews, which I think will try to exhaustively examine every feature of a game or anything like that, uh, we just play it like normal people play it and say what we think. I'm going to pull the curtain back. All game reviewers are liars. Some of them are just better at it than others, and that includes us. Are you saying that no one finishes games ever? I mean, they do, and then they brag about it and tell you about how great they are. Anyway, okay, let's talk about this paint game. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so, Omar, real quick, I'm actually curious, what's your history with the Splatoon? Now it's a franchise. Um, I played Splatoon 1 a little bit when it came out. Good enough uh, for me. I, yeah, I played enough of the multiplayer and single player to know what the game is about. Okay, and Lawrence, you played number one to completion? Uh, mm, like uh most yeah. most viewers do. I finished the single player. Um, I didn't keep up with it, though, and I think that's important because Splatoon was actually an evolving service. They added a, they added a lot of modes and maps as the game went on. Hmm. So I played Turf War, which is like... Uh, the main multiplayer mode, mm -hmm. but what didn't stick around for all the stuff they added later on. Right. I mean, I had a Wii U and I didn't buy this game, so that's actually <laughs> a big, big reason why I was curious to come on here today to talk about it because I'm coming on as someone who yeah. I'm curious why this game warranted a sequel. What was so special about the first one that made people go, "Oh yeah, I want to do that again with that sweet squid chick." <laughs> I guess we should we should delve into what the yeah, what the hell is the game right. like what is the story of Splatoon? Uh, uh, in terms of story, it's more of a setting than a story. You're in a world of of cross hybrid ocean creatures. You play as an inkling, which is a weird squid child creature. Yeah, creature because uh, it's not it's not a squid. They turn into ink. Yeah, they. Well, they're, they're, they turn into squids that can swim in ink, Omar. No, please. but they like they when you go through the grates and stuff, you're like you are ink. Mm, no, you're just a squid that goes through. Real quick, grates. Omar, you're in your thirties. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. There's, there's kind of a fundamental, fundamentally unique mechanic. Uh, so you spray your your little ink gun. It inks the ground, mm. and then you hold the left trigger to turn into a squid. And when you are a squid, you swim faster through your own color. And you also refill your ink, yeah, so that's you how you refill. reload, and also how you traverse. Okay. I always thought it was really funny that you shoot your ink, and then you refill by swimming through the set the same ink. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like infinite perpetual we, motion. Machine. Yeah, yeah we, right. we solved the energy crisis with ink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's. I was curious about that because we are watching some footage right now, and uh, having never played the game. I'm figuring it out, and I guess that is the main mechanic, right? Yep. Okay, so every character does that. Yes, okay. and then the main multiplayer mode is called Turf War, uh, which is a giant map, and you run around on it, you spray your ink everywhere, and at the end of three minutes, whoever has the most terrain covered in their color wins. Right. And it sounds really basic, but there's so many layers to it. There's different kinds of weapons. There's long-range weapons, short-range weapons. There's paint rollers that are designed to cover ground. There's, like, sniper rifles that are designed to... The, the verbiage is splat your enemies because, you know, family-friendly. Yeah, they charge, like, charge-up weapons and stuff. Yup. And, mm -hmm. then, and then it almost gets into mobile-like mechanics where the fights aren't as important as your uptime and what you're doing in a given match. So, splatting an enemy is not as important as just making sure that they're not doing anything for a while so you can cover more ground. And then, the Splatoon 2 also has a, a super system, it's kind of similar to uh, Ultimates and Overwatch. Mm -hmm. um, as you cover ground, you gain points, which fills up a meter, and then that then uh, lets you do a super move that's uh, baked into your loadout. Your gun, your sub-weapon, which is like a grenade type of item, and then a super. Mm -hmm. So then, then it's weird because then matches start to fall into this rhythm where you know, okay, if I follow this way through the map, and I cover this amount of ground, I'll know I'll have my super at like the 22nd mark, and then I can use that to win the first engagement with the other team when we clash in the middle of the map. And then once I do that, then I have the next 30 seconds to clear more of the map and then set up these traps where... I can ink something, and I know that's going to draw their attention, and then I can hide around a corner and grab them when they walk out. Hmm. It's shockingly deep. Is the multiplayer the main draw of the game, or is the single player kind of worth buying? Or, you know, So I own a Switch, I'm looking sure. for more games to play. Hmm? Is this something that I could enjoy if I don't have an online connection, like I'm on a plane or something? Not for long. Yeah, not for long. The first one, for sure, like the, the single player stuff in the first one that I played, it was just like the little puzzle map, puzzle map stuff. Yeah. It was like Captain Toad's kind of thing, where 
you it's like a 3D platformer and you have to solve a puzzle and then you get to a little boss fight at the end or something. More or less. I uh, for me it's it's much more similar to like Mario Galaxy where there are there are sections of platforming and like a little micro challenge. You have to navigate these blocks and shoot this enemy and then you hit a launch pad and go off to the next section. Um, it's basically a good trainer for multiplayer. Okay. The main draw is the multiplayer. Correct? Absolutely. Okay. And in that regard, uh, I think Splatoon 2 is pretty great. Uh, if for no, no other reason than it is the kind of game that it is on the Switch, which means you can take it to a hotel, just play a round or two. Um, the fact that by definition the matches are a finite amount of time mm -hmm. makes it very portable. Uh, there's something James talks about a lot with Marvel Puzzle Quest that you know when you're going to go into the game, you know how much you can get done with a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And that's very important if you're playing on the go. So if you're like waiting for your lift to arrive and it says five minutes, you know that's enough time to play one round. Um, as opposed to something like Overwatch or Rainbow Six or something like that where rounds could potentially last a very long time. Mm -hmm. For the Switch, there's no other game like this right now. There's no twin stick shooter uh, that is competitive and multiplayer and well made. I have a question about that with the Switch. Mm -hmm. Is this just another... Is this a, a true sequel? Uh, in the sense that we had Mario Kart come out on Switch, and it's just a, a re-release. Yeah. It was basically, oh, I had a Wii U, it kind of sucked about a Switch. Oh, the Switch is better, it's more portable, I can take it with me. Now it seems like Nintendo's just sort of re-releasing a lot of the old games already. Is this just a reskin, or is it legitimately a sequel? Uh, it's a... Uh, Would you call it Splatoon 1.5? Maybe. Uh, it, it depends... It's tough with multiplayer shooters because it depends entirely on on what's important to you. I mean, it's got new maps, it's got new guns, it's got some new mechanics. They changed up some of the original guns. So just as a micro example, there's something called this, the ink roller, which is normally a traverse, like it's meant to cover ground quickly. But now when you jump and do it, you can sling a, a vertical column of ink, which helps you traverse faster. Didn't happen in the original game, so it's like they, they're adding tools to familiar weapon types to change how you play with them. Okay. So, if you got that much into Splatoon 1, those differences will mean a lot. If you just played a few rounds and you were like, oh, this is neat, but maybe not for me, it's possible Splatoon 2 won't be as visibly different as you might want. Um, I mean, it sounds just as much of an upgrade as, like, the next Call of Duty is from the one previous. Right? Kind of, yeah. And to that point, it does have a new mode. There's a co-op mode called uh, Salmon Run. Um, which is like, it's kind of a half thing. It's only on one map, uh, which is kind of a bummer. But it is fun, um, and it can get pretty intense. And that's sort of the, uh, if you don't feel like playing competitive, you can play Salmon Run. But as usual, as usual with Nintendo, there are a few, uh, a few hitches. Um, it's only, if you want to play online, you can only do it during timed events. So, Salmon Run will open for a certain amount of time, and then you can match make with friends, and you can do all that stuff, but... You can't play it whenever you want, unless you're local. <laughs> and also, uh, every time you play Salmon Run, for the duration of that event, you can unlock rewards, like gear and stuff for multiplayer, because gear has different abilities on it. Mm -hmm. um, like, your ink will recharge faster, your gun will be pow more powerful, stuff like that. <laughs> I was gonna ask about that. Is there an actual progression system in the game? Yes. Okay. Uh, sort of. Uh, there's leveling on both single player and multiplayer, right? Uh, no, single player doesn't really have leveling. It's, it's got guns you can upgrade, but again, that ends up being mostly unimportant. Because once you beat the single player, there's not a whole, whole lot of reason to go back. And that progression doesn't matter to multiplayer. Um, but the multiplayer progression is important because once you hit level 10, then you can play a different game mode that's not Turf War. And with Salmon Run, the gear you unlock does fundamentally improve your character's performance in multiplayer. Hmm. So it's like all these intercon- well, at least with the online portion, they're interconnected systems that are just teetering on the edge of being like mobile games-ish in terms of how they want to keep you engrossed and connected. Um, earning Splatoon coins to upgrade your gear or change the upgrade slots in them and stuff like that. Okay. I, was, I was just curious if there's a reason for, like, what, what was the game aspect that's going to keep someone coming back to play as opposed to like let's go way back and say like Quake sure where you just play a map and you're done you walk away there's no record of your progression it's just a thing that's kind of what I assume Splatoon was but I guess it we are in the year of our lord 2017 mm -hmm. so there are you mechanics gotta, you got a level yeah there is a carrot dangling in front of my face that's gonna keep me running right sure so it's it's really fascinating I think the Quake comparison is pretty apt uh, 
I was I was musing on this last night, and it's going to take me a bit to get to my point, but I promise it'll be worth it. So, uh, most shooters, the heat map is weird in terms of the action and intensity of what you're doing. You're running around the map, you're trying to find someone to shoot at, or you're escorting a payload, escorting a payload, something like that, pushing a cart. Um, I would say that most of the time, it's pretty low tension, what you're doing in a shooter. Mm -hmm. You're waiting for the moment when your skill can really express itself. Whereas in Splatoon, what you're doing all the time is the most important thing. You're always covering ground. Mm -hmm. Or at least you should be. So even when you miss, you're helping. Exactly. And even when no one's around, you're still thinking about what you need to be doing, where you need to be going, um, what the other team is doing, and what you need to do to be the most effective. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, on a second-to-second -second basis, matches in Splatoon are quite a bit more intense than other shooters I've played because you're always active. On that regard, I think Quake is pretty a pretty interesting point of comparison because Quake felt that way. Mm -hmm. It was so fast that there was very little downtime when you were playing. So I think, for me at least, the, the motivation to keep playing is that a three-minute match of Splatoon is so intense that I can't play it sitting back on a couch. I get pretty into it. I lean forward, I'm shouting, which is actually pretty fun to shout at, at cartoons, basically. Mm -hmm. Don't you need an insanely convoluted headset yeah, in order just to talk about, to other people? You do, which is garbage. I'm not going to lie. That's stupid as hell. But I also don't care to talk to anybody, sure. so it's, it, not, it's a non-starter for me. I didn't even try it, to be frank. I'm not going to. I have no reason. It's, it's weird because as dumb as that is, there's no reason to communicate over voice with anyone in Splatoon unless you want to go esports with it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, I then mean, it you're doesn't. With your buddies and stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess if you just want to shoot the shit, but then you have no reason to use Splatoon's voice service. Mm -hmm. You can use any number of ways to talk with other human well, beings so that are just, just for those who don't know, the way in order to use their yeah. service involves using a f your phone, right? Yep. Uh, so Which already has Discord abilities yep. or. A phone ability. Mm -hmm. Does the app call. also do like matchmaking? Yes. Stuff, though? So yeah. that that's oh, really? weird. Yes, that that's how you matchmake. Sort of. Um, if you just want to, if you just want to connect up with your friends, just join a game that your friend is in. Mm -hmm. You can do that through the game. It's pretty simple. Uh, but if you want to like form a private uh, private match with select people, that is done through the app. So you go into the game. You have to like hook up the app to your Nintendo account. By downloading onto your phone, okay. go into the game, say create a room, it'll put a notification on your phone, and then through your phone, you send invites to other people, and then they get that notification on their phone, they accept it, and then their game will launch into that room. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, I, you gotta wonder what someone was thinking would be the benefit of doing this. I want uh, cost reduction, I think. It's how, like how? I mean, you're, they still have to do the work. Is they're just doing it on a separate platform? It just it seems very odd that the Xbox 360 came out, however many <laughs> dozens of years ago, and, and we're nailed still. It, yeah. yeah, I mean, like this is something that. Inviting someone to a private game doesn't... Anyway, whatever. There had to have been some kind of benefit they were seeing that we don't see, right? Maybe it's a way to just keep it to adults, uh, so that pervy... I guess Nintendo has a real issue with pervy stalkers on their platform. I don't know if it's so much that... I, I blame Japan. So, so... <laughs> I Because, yeah, I was trying to puzzle this out. All I can figure is that, for me, not giving a shit about team chat, not giving a shit about communicating or interacting with any human being aside from playing a video game with them. Splatoon 2 is actually a pretty sublime experience. Because you can't talk to me, even if you wanted to. <laughs> so I'm not saying that, that, that yeah. it's a positive, because it is kind of stupid. But in terms of how I want to play with the game, which mm -hmm. is, I want to pick it up, play a few rounds, put it down, and go on with my day. Sure. There's zero complication. You don't want to... Hit a button, get into the you game. You don't want a 14-year-old telling you, like... Laura, what's your problem? Why aren't you covering top level? Say top level, and you're gonna be like, okay. Exactly. From the footage that we've looked at in the game, like, I, I'm actually kind of interested in checking it out now. It seems fun. It does, yeah, especially if the mechanics are fairly simple, and like, it, it just has, it looks like it has just enough of a competitive edge, uh, that I will stay interested in it, but not so much that I'm going to go crazy try hard with it with something like Overwatch or Battlefield or something like that. I think you might be surprised how it grabs you. It's got that second-to-second -second feel. Like, it's colorful, it's nice to look at, hmm. and it just feels good to cover the world in your color. <laughs> it's it's a weird sensation, just but... Cover the cover the world in yeah. your goo? That's yeah. what I, that's what that's I tell right. elementary Spray schools everybody. when I do speaking engagements. Is 
the is there still a town that you have to do all your shit in in mm -hmm. the beginning? There's a hub, there, but do you have to like go into separate buildings to like upgrade one thing versus another? You do, but there's a jump list now. Okay, so, there, so there's a jump faster. menu. It's super fast. You can get anywhere with two hits of a button. Is there so. Meaver stuff happening in that world? Yes. So when it basically oh. you'll see other inklings around Inkopolis. God, I have to say this shit. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, there's there's totally the same setup where they can go to a little mailbox and. Uh, and draw up little pictures and it's actually a pretty great and cute way to express community and culture because those also appear in matches there will be billboards with people's drawings on it that are like flickering and stuff as as a semi-old dude this game is super 90s like it's very nickelodeon slime it's very hip-hop like the culture is like baggy like baggy hats and like button up polos backwards jeans Maybe yes that stuff's just coming back and you were ahead of the curve the whole time no it, it, it is <laughs> it, it's hitting the cultural wraparound like even even the maps have like skate ramps and vert ramps in them noticing that yeah very rocket power yeah it, it's it's it is essentially a tony hawks pro skater shooter uh in the way that it, that you like Basically, when you hold left trigger and turn into squid mode, you're essentially on a skateboard. And you can grind rails, you can climb ramps, wow. you can do like trip tricks, you can jump around people and shoot them from behind. Yeah, it's you very can, like, acrobatic. Shoot out, of, shoot out up into the air and do stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, there's, there's, it's a very unique kind of game. Not only because it's, it's a very playable and pretty competitive and pretty tight shooter on the Switch, but also for its, its art design, its music, its style. It's just, it's got a lot going for it. Are the maps still, is it, are they still limiting based on like time, what's available for you to play? Yes, and I'm glad you asked about that. So, not a lot of people knew what to make of that when Splatoon 1 came out. Um, in a given mode, be it Turf War or uh, there's like a tower control mode that unlocks when you hit level 10. Haven't even played that yet because I just hit level 10 last night. Any mode in a given week has only two maps, but the next week it rotates out. And I think the total map pool is around seven or eight. I could is be wrong about that. Is that how long the maps would stay in the in the first one? Yeah, I think it was weekly. I could be wrong, um, probably wrong, but as I think the maps rotate out every week, and that seems bad, but with competitive shooters, a week is about enough time to really learn a map. So in the in the in like review session, they were changing maps every day. I don't know that they're going to do that when the game comes out. There, there is actually a schedule in the game that tells you how long a current map rotation is going to be where it is and when the next ones are coming. But uh, that's what makes it really weird to evaluate on a mathematical basis how much content is in the game. Because with Splatoon 1, it started off not having a whole lot to it, but immediately they were rolling out new content. And I expect that's what's going to happen with Splatoon 2. It feels kind of like a mobile game on a console. Kind of. Yeah, it seems kind of... No, I'm saying that in actually a positive way. It's yeah. like the best of both worlds where... There's enough little content that seems to be swapping in and out, and that be you know be the maps, but it's enough that that you go, oh, something new. Mm -hmm. uh, since you know we always talk about it, games are pretty much a service now. Uh, you need something to keep people coming back, otherwise they get bored. Yeah. Um, so yeah, seems interesting. And then one final one final note on the controls. I was going to ask about motion controls. Yeah. Um, so with the Wii U, it was really funky. Essentially, you had to tilt the entire tablet yeah, to aim up and down right. and then move left and right with a stick. I kind of got what they were going for, but it didn't feel right for a long time. You can turn it off in this game, and you it could, has... You could turn it off in the other one, you too. You could. But I was, was going to ask you specifically if you had been playing with that, and, like, you know how in Zelda Breath, Breath of the Wild, when you're playing, like, you're shooting arrows and stuff, the motion controls actually make it a lot better. Yes. And, it, like, normally... It's basically I, aim down sights, right? Yeah, like, like yeah, normally I would be like, I, I'm never going to touch this stuff, this is the worst idea in the world, and just turn it all off, but that little fine tuning that you could do with, road, like, moving the tablet around in 3D space actually helped a lot in that game. I was wondering if this game has a similar feel. I'm glad you brought up Zelda, because that's exactly how it works. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very similar feel, and I'm glad that Zelda came out first, because hopefully it sort of introduced people to how that sort of aiming can work. Um, if you're playing with Joy-Cons, the right Joy-Con has the motion control. So essentially that's what you wave around to get fine control. The Pro Controller has motion controls too. Yeah. So I ended up using that a lot, and then yeah, just tilting it left and right and up and down gives you that fine control. And it feels almost as precise as a mouse. Which is wild. I never expected that. But And I think that's another, another ingredient of why I enjoyed my time with Splatoon 2 so much. Whenever I play console shooters, there's always a moment of frustration where I can't turn fast enough to hit somebody. And they kill me, not because they had better aim, but because they were just positioned in a certain way. 
Um, that doesn't really happen with Splatoon 2 unless it's an active moment of, uh, of positioning. So if you like swim behind somebody or jump over them and behind them, you can get a jump on them and get a few hits on them. But you can swivel around real fast in this game and you can aim up and down real fast. <laughs> which makes... It just makes it feel better. Uh, and I, I really appreciated that. Hmm. And to think that there's a game that controls that well and is also mobile and is also just genuinely fun to play and a fun shooter, it's a pretty cool combination of all factors. So that's about it for our episode of uh, In Review, talking about Splatoon 2. Lawrence, you played it to, I guess, what we could call completion. Well, I finished uh, the single player. In I our got mind. 10 and multi. I played Sam. I mean, I tried to get as much much experience in it as I could, mm -hmm. but it's... It, that's the weird thing about Splatoon. It's going to keep changing, mm -hmm. so to, to draw the line right now in terms of its content is, is really hard to Sounds do. Sounds like it's a game that's unreviewable. Oh. If you ask me, oh. it's kind of perfect for this weird-ass show. Uh, well, as a, uh, <laughs> as a father with no kids, um, I just have to say this seems like a game that uh, seems like it would be pretty fun for people with not a lot of time, but I want to hear you. What do, what do you give it? What's its final score? Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to give it three and a half aggro crags. Nice. Out of, I don't know. Not out of four. That's out fine. Out of Kellen Keenan or whatever. That's good. There you go. <laughs> I never had cable as a kid. I'm just I'm I'm repeating whatever I hear James say oh, on a just, daily basis. Well, okay, just you know, Good Burger was a movie and not a. Sh it was more of a skit. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't really like its own show. <laughs> oh, people often get that confused. I didn't know that. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Always educational. I don't know. Sneaky dice. Ooh, Bruce, this is your nickname in high school. Yeah, it was. Bruce Sneaky <laughs> oh. Dice Cream. Round seven. Roll your dice. What if it just told you on the screen? Check your opponent's dice roll. <laughs> what? Maybe it's vibrating to tell you Say how much they have. Something about your opponent's dice roll. It can be true or a bluff. Call her something. Call her a racial slang. Warm weather we've been having Ooh. recently. You can reroll your.